Welcome back. This is the Joe and Connor's Power Hour, Volume 13. We're on 13 episodes. Boy, does time fly. Mm -hmm. We've revived this series last week. We did it for a while, like a year ago. But anyways, one thing we have yet to cover is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Agreed. And uh, it's something that Joe focuses on a lot on his channel. I talk about Marvel sometimes. I usually watch the new movies and talk about them in my drunk views or have made some videos on those in the past. But with the upcoming announcement, or with the upcoming release, I should say, of Deadpool 3, yep. uh, the new trailer for Captain America, Kang, uh, Jonathan Majors getting fired as Kang, and yep. so on and so on. Uh, I think the uh, future of the MCU seems kind of interesting, so yeah. that is a future we're going to uh, discuss today. So, Joe, um, lead us in. What do you want to talk All about right, first? So we'll, we'll start with the newest thing. I think we should talk about the trailer that came out, because everyone's talking about the trailer. Yeah. I think everyone wants to... So, I guess let's go... Well, I, first, we'll start this off with going over each of our individual thoughts. What did you think of the trailer? I thought the trailer was fairly interesting um it looks like it's shot really well i like kind of the editing tactics they've used to make it mm -hmm. feel more like a political thriller a la uh winter soldier which i think they're trying to tap into here because it's been a while since the captain america ip has been on screen at all yeah. uh since it's been about five or six years since endgame now and uh we also um haven't seen a Captain America movie since 2016 with Civil War, so this is kind well. of <laughs> the soft reboot with uh, uh, Sam Wilson or Anthony Mackie as Captain yeah. America, and that uh, kid they introduced as the Falcon, and they're screwing around trying to prove themselves as the new Captain America Falcon duo yeah. that uh, audiences had got to know. Um, with that said, I am not too sure how I feel about Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross, like they recasted, which is fine, but they kind of picked a major actor to step in a role that was uh, definitely one I think works better for character actors. But I mean, I always love Harrison Ford, so we'll see what happens. And kind of yeah. the tease for Red Hulk is kind of interesting, and I'm almost surprised Disney's held off this long. Um,. So, I'm moderately excited for it. Yeah. It doesn't look like dog shit from the first trailer. Granted, yeah. it's a pretty short little trailer. Uh, and I know it's by a bunch of the people who did Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I was pretty mixed on. Yeah, so, but apparently, even, we'll though by, even though it's by the Falcon and the Winter Soldier people, they went in because they want this movie to be successful. This movie has gone through a lot of reshoots and a lot of changes. Yep. This is why it took so long to get to where it is. So I don't know if you know the background of like what's been going on, but like at one point this was just like a Hulk movie and Captain America was like kind of like a side character in his right. in his own movie. And then at one point this is gonna have She-Hulk and Hulk's son and Hulk and like right. now, now granted I do think that because we do see as we go into certain details in the trailer, I do know for a fact that Hulk is gonna be in this movie. Like, right. like because you wouldn't do Red Hulk and just put Red Hulk up against Captain America. Yeah. You, you, you'll, you'll see. You'll see Hulk. I don't know how good old Ruffalo's hiding all this all of a sudden because he's just terrible at keeping secrets. They, they probably put him in one of those yeah. cells from the trailer. <laughs> I mean, they got to include him or at least tease yeah. Red Hulk versus Hulk matchup eventually. Well, from what I heard, they did. So the villains of this movie completely changed. So they, I don't know if you know, but from the get-go, there's one character in this movie that's used in a different way than they're originally about, uh, uh, supposed to be used. There's a character in one of the hallways, kind of a mi minor shield supporting character. There's a character in this movie that's called Diamondback. And mm. Diamondback was in Luke Cage and was going to be brought into the MCU in bigger light in here. But originally, just like they originally planned to do a Civil War before they announced Civil War was going to be um, Civil War, it was originally going to be Serpent Society. And they were right. going to do Serpent Society in this movie, so they cast a bunch of WWE wrestlers and like a whole bunch of stuff they're going to do to make the Serpent Society look badass and cool. And then they decided, oh, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. And so apparently they, they changed their plan, they had their vision, and apparently they changed the entire final fight of this movie. Because the final fight in this movie, you know, unless they, ch they change it enough that it, that it becomes less obvious, I've heard the final fight is in the, in, is in the White House in this movie. Right. So it's supposed to be, when you see the, so some people thought, oh, they're going to blow up the White House 
because the trailer. But what you're seeing in the trailer when the White House is kind of exploding, that's Red Hulk breaking his way through the the White House. It's gonna be Cap and and uh, and 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 whoever. I think that this movie, this trailer is very vague considering what this movie is actually gonna be. Like right. so, I this movie, the trailer gives me kind of like a White House down meets Equalizer vibe from the political thriller kind of like like vibe right. they're going for, and then which I think is great. I also heard that, I don't know if this is true still, but apparently Kevin Feige, because of all the nonsense that's been going on with the Marvel movies lately, he jumped onto this movie to write it. Like, like normally he'll just like people behind the scenes. He jumped on, called the Rooster Brothers, had the Rooster Brothers coming. That's why it looks so much like, like kind of that Civil War feel. It's not from this director from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They begged for help because they were in trouble. This right, movie was having well, some of the similar problems with Blade, but... You, you, know, gotta, just, you gotta make Captain America work. Yep. Um, especially since he's... I mean, he's the first big, like, replacement hero they're trying yep. to push. They kind of teetered him in with that Falcon and the Winter Soldier show, but for mm -hmm. the most part, like... He, you gotta get people on board with Mackie as the new yeah. Captain America. You might be able to have Chris Evans, like, cameo or show yep, up yep. as a multiverse or fucking who cares. He'll we'll go get back later, in time. Yeah. We'll get but I think, I think Anthony Mackie is probably gonna get his own kind of trilogy going yeah it makes the, it makes the memes pretty great now about how tom holland and anthony mackie had beef we'll like, oh, be, you, he's we'll, like, you don't even have any movies I'm like i got a movie now bro what, 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 what you talking about yeah, <laughs> I, I think uh honestly like we'll be seeing captain america 7 before we see spider-man 4 at the rate sony and marvel are going. <laughs> honestly that's probably true um so i think like as captain america is one of my most favorite characters in marvel this for me, I've actually I've seen a lot of backlash for Sam, and honestly, if anyone, if you any of you guys read the comics, I don't, I know Mar you like to pick on Marvel for like using its diversity and, and whatever, but what you need to remember is there are certain characters that like had that Marvel's forced diversity on people, like some of the like stuff with like Kamala and whatever in the Marvels and and even well, Captain I mean, Marvel. yeah, I think people people hit the diversity. In the angle of its cells. Here's the thing that Marvel does, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I'm, I'm just gonna... Cause, okay, so in like 2012, they did Marvel Now. Yep, and yep. comics were going down the drain a little bit. They weren't selling as well as New 52. So they did Marvel Now. That didn't strum up hype like New 52 did. So mm -hmm. they said, okay, well, Disney comes to them and says, we need to replace a bunch of people for the movies. Let's just make up some new replacement characters and then you know comics be as comics be those characters came out some of them were great some of them sucked mm -hmm. and then they uh disappeared and were replaced back with the uh original characters with some of them going in the background so you got like captain marvel replacing miss marvel which was an obvious ploy to make her more marketable um, since Captain Marvel had been in the background for so long that he wasn't marketable. You yeah. had Jane Foster as Thor, which actually worked out. She was, her and Miles were kind of the first two to do it because they kind of had legitimate story reasons. Like they wanted to kill off Peter and Ultimate Spider-Man to try to save the Ultimate Spider-Man comic because sales were starting to hurt and, and it worked and Miles became a big marketable character. Um, <clears throat> Jane Foster's Thor had probably the best run out of all of the replacement heroes because it was still done by Jason mm -hmm. Aaron who was just yeah. killing it as oh, yeah. uh, and then you had Sam Wilson as Captain America which was I think that was done because they saw how much money they made doing it with, with Thor and right. Spider-Man because the thing was mainstream media will capture it too right you know they don't care i mean it'll sell a million issues and everything will be reverted in a year that's how comics yeah. work i think either the thing that I'm other captain normal steve rogers will come back yeah. or and sam wilson will go away or they'll both be around well when we talk about kind of what happens next of these next couple of movies i think sam is definitely be around for a while but i do think that they are eventually going to revert back to a new steve rogers because mm. one thing that we're going to talk about in the later half of this of this podcast is that the new plan for the MCU is that all the characters that have been in this thing that really suck in the new like last two like phases of, of Marvel right. so their strategy is to go back to basics and so their plan is hey we have the uh, even though we have new characters 
the new characters aren't making a universe worthy. They're not making it work. So, like, you know, in DC, well, DC's starting to ring, find their foundation. They have to establish their pillars. They can have any new characters they want, but they have to have a Superman, a Wonder Woman, and a Batman. Because they need their right. pillar heroes. And so with Marvel, they decided, because well, the, the actors, actors wanted to move on to other things, whatever. Too much they, money, etc., Yeah, et they, they decided to throw, throw their pillars aside. And so if you look at this, the universe is like almost like a statue, right? It can't stand without its pillars. And so I think as much as we are glad those actors get to go, go and do other projects, we haven't seen success from them leaving that universe. So they're clearly... I mean, except for Robert Downey Jr. because he did get that um, that that supporting actor award in Oppenheimer. Right. But, I mean, everybody's moving on to try to find new things. I think. But I think the, they found that they're ready to come back. The <laughs> problem is everything needed to be a little symbiotic because yeah. you you become a huge star from Marvel, but you're super typecast, and everyone yep. knows Chris Evans. <laughs> this Captain America. I yeah. mean, at this point, it's trivia, anything he did before that. Oh, he was in Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yep. that's kind of weird. Yep. He was in The Losers, which was a DC property. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's kind of weird. He was yep. Human Torch. He was blah, blah, blah. Yep. That's it, all it, trivial. He's now famous for being Captain America. Yeah, Robert Downey so Jr., 20-year career Iron before yeah. Iron Man. That's all trivial. He, he's Iron Man now. Yeah, even though he's played Sherlock Holmes, everyone's always going to remember him for Iron Man because it's the yep. big thing. And I think that's that's the thing. So I think that like with this, I, they, they keep saying they're doing this reboot. I actually have a video that addresses this in full detail that's dropping later today that you guys will have to check out. Where it um, where I go over the topics about, so like we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. Nobody signs up for Marvel. At, like, you know, when they announced the idea of Deadpool and Wolverine, I think a lot of us are like, oh, Ryan Reynolds got... Hugh Jackman to come back for a Deadpool movie. That's great. And in the past, if this was still the Fox days, Hugh Jackman could sign up for Deadpool 3 and just be done with it. Like, he could get one movie, and then he's walking away. Right. But now that Deadpool Wolverine is in the MCU, that's no longer an option. So if you sign on for one movie, you're stuck for maybe three. Well, I don't know how true that is, though, because we had Andrew Garfield and... Toby Maguire. But there's an exception to those rules. Those those people are still owned by Sony though. So that's the difference yeah. to that rule. Fox is owned by Disney now. But I so. mean they want the money for bringing back Wolverine. Right. So I mean right. Hugh Jackman has the cards. He names his price. Yep. He he says how many movies he wants to do and at that point Disney can take it or right. leave it. Well apparently but they the keep the movies expanding. are gonna make way more money than it was originally going yeah. to because oh, yeah. you have well, they already Wolverine. said that even even before there was a Deadpool 3 script, even when they were doing everything, if you look at the, the interviews and the articles, which we'll talk about when we get to Deadpool and Wolverine, they have said that there was no Deadpool 3 happening without Wolverine. Like, right. this entire movie happens because Wolverine is there. Not that Deadpool isn't a great character, but a Deadpool 3 didn't exist without Wolverine, it sounded like. Yeah. Like, and so I think, and, and I've heard even that it was going to be cancelled before Hugh Jackman said yes. Like, they were saying, like, they're, oh, we want to do a Deadpool 3, we want to do a Deadpool 3. They're coming to, I, Ryan Reynolds is going through ideas, he's trying everything. Blank, blank, failed, failed. This isn't a good idea for a script. Ah, they, they get ready to pitch with Sean Levy and uh, and Kevin Feige, and pretty much they're ready to tell Kevin Feige, you know, we have nothing. And, and, then, and then Hugh Jackman goes and saves their, their asses. But we'll right. get to that later, because we're going to talk about that with Deadpool and Wolverine. But so my point being is, this whole idea is... The, you should be very expecting, and there was even a Variety article about this and all the Kang nonsense that's going on. Marvel had to make a very big decision to pull people back in. And the decision they made is, our big people, because we're in the multiverse and we have variants, you're going to see yeah. those big dogs return. And they're not just coming in for little multiverse of madness, kill um, kill them once and then they're gone just for a blink second can- cameo. When they're coming back, they're back. Like, when yeah. Iron Man's back... It's not the same Iron Man from from Endgame, but Tony Stark is, in a fashion, signing a 10, maybe 5, 6, 7 deal again. Like, it's... Chris Evans, he's, he's talked about since WandaVision. He's back in. They've been working on a big project with him for a long time. Right. Scarlett Johansson is supposed to be a director of that um, Phantom Woman deep cut Marvel... Um, uh, what's it called? The, the Blonde Phantom Marvel oh, project. Oh, yeah. She's producing it, but apparently... After the whole BS with Black Widow and everything that happened, with the Russo's back in, it sounds like she's back in as Black Widow in some capacity as well. So it seems hmm. like they're all coming back. 
because of this whole variant thing. And some yeah. of them will stay longer than the others, but I think I the know. big two I are going to stay I think the up. danger is relying on the multiverse too much. I think there's yeah. a, a bag of worms they open that they are going to have a hard time closing because I heard the rumor is Spider-Man 4, they're trying to do Mr. Negative and take it back a bit. Yep, do yep. some smaller projects. The problem is if you say, okay, this isn't <clears throat> the Iron Man that died, but it's still Robert Downey Jr. He just comes from another world. You or I can suspend our disbelief and understand that as people who look into this stuff more or read the comics. But um, a general audience member is going to be like, what the fuck is that? Well, yeah, and, and it's going to lead think, to bad sales. And, and I've been it's going to confuse this, the fuck out of I've people. I've been saying this since the beginning. Um, and this is what I think DC is doing really well that, that in their new universe that Marvel should catch up to and start to think about. Is Kevin Feige in Phase 4... And ticket sales, ticket sales shows, okay? It's it's no longer, it's a lot of these movies, general audience, they used to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. If you look at, if you look at the Guardians of the Galaxy with volume three, you look at weeks after everything happened, it wasn't casual fans that got that movie to do well and go off the ground. It took weeks to do it because of all the damage from previous phase four movies. Yep. But the reason they succeeded is because comic book fans wanted to see that movie. They heard word of mouth and they heard it was good. And so the thing right. that needs to be well, said Guardians, is... Well, I, I think Guardians also has the advantage of... Yep. You have James Gunn, a bunch of actors, people like... What Marvel has not understood, and it was hard, How would they? Because during, like, Endgame, yep. they could fucking... Kevin Feige could press his ass cheeks against an IMAX camera yep. and take a... And rip ass for yep. three minutes and then end it with the fucking Red Hulk end credit scene and yep. then make a billion dollars. Yep, exactly. But I think that, <clears throat> there I, had to be characters that actually cut, caught the public consciousness. I mean, yeah. you look at someone like Ant-Man... Ant-Man came right after Age of Ultron, yep. mm -hmm. so it was popular, and then Ant-Man 2 came between Infinity War and Endgame, like, how could it fail? Yep. And then Ant-Man 3 comes out and it makes no money because no one fucking cares about the character, and it's the same thing with Captain Marvel. Yeah. I the think movie the, the, came between Endgame and Infinity War, no way it'll fail, and then it, number two comes out and nobody gives a fuck, and nobody knows who these other two characters are because no one's watching the Disney Plus shows. And I think that's the thing where we're, where, that, that they, they ruined and they struggled that they didn't understand, is that with this whole situation that they're in, they need to realize, I've said this about Kevin Feige before, I, I enjoy his work, I think some of the stuff he did in the early stages was very good. But one of the things I feel he fails on is he started making Marvel, basically, you know those For Dummies books? Yeah. He made Marvel for the general audience specifically, and then he started leaning into the for dummies. So when he's coming up with the multiverse, he had to come up with a multiverse guide to explain the step by step. He wanted people that never seen a Marvel movie. He had to spend two two thirds of that one Marvel movie that that everything was established, basically being like Deadpool in those like in the beginning of his movie when he tries to explain everything that happened in the events. Oh, now you're all caught up. You didn't go see the previous movie, so look, now you're all caught up, and that was a mistake. Because while the general audience is there and they will help with the ticket sales, it's the comic fans with these movies. The comic fan population, is it used to be a, one of those like Western things where like, oh, will the comic fans and stuff decline? But I think we've seen now, comic fans, especially if, they, if parents have kids and then they have younger, new comic fans, the comic fan numbers are big enough to sustain themselves. And I think that if... And I think we're seeing that with DC right now. I, when, I don't when, know if it... I don't know if that's true. I think there has to be a general. There has well, to there be has a general, general audience, audience to make a billion dollars. There, there has, has to, be to. There's no comic fans in China. I mean, there's very few comic fans in China that are picking up issues. Right. Week no. To week no. I know that the general audience is there. still important. I just think that oh, overall, yeah. their focus of their movies, you need to be able to write the things that the general audience will understand, but you want to be able to still. Hand to the comic no, fans. No, I mean it has still... it has to be smart. Or, yes, or, it has to be strategized. You know, the comic fans are an aspect and, and right. add a lot of word of mouth and free marketing yeah. and are most likely to see the movie two three times rather yep. than somebody going on date night with their yeah. girlfriend and I think on that's a Friday the thing night. With, and I think that's the problem with the general with, with the general audience is that they get catered to so much, but they don't care all that much. They yeah. they they give a percentage, but we're leaning too heavily into that. I mean, but just on own. a base, you have to make pillar characters. They don't yes. have any pillar characters. They got Spider-Man, which is half-owned with Sony. Yep. And no Way Home thing. was successful because of that. They wrapped up Guardians, but they, they managed to yep. and they make can't, good, interesting characters. No and one they can't make Guardians their new their, their new interesting characters because they can't find their footing. They're going to have to 
unfortunately, as much whether it doesn't make sense at all, they're out of options in terms of what they can do to bring people into this into this. I world. would argue things like the multiverse overly pan to comic book fans. No yes. way home did it right. They should have left it at that and right. closed the multiverse bag and worms. The right. fact that they opened it, what Secret Wars is going to be such a clusterfuck. Who, who's that going to appeal to? Right. Like, think about it, because like you, you can add a million random characters as Easter eggs, but fans will be like, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know who these Avengers people are because right. I haven't watched a movie since Infinity War right. and Endgame, and none That's of them true. are left because yeah, none of them are on contracts. Well, no, it seems like they're really. She Hulk taking... will pop up with Miss Marvel and yeah. be punching out some fucking comic book character nobody ever heard of that yeah. wasn't established. I think they're it planning... It's they're, not they're, gonna they're, work. I think with Secret Wars, they really want Secret Wars to work, so they're really doing careful planning and really trying to make sure... Like, I heard that they're not gonna... I think they have to do careful planning now, because they started yeah. out not. They've yeah. announced something they didn't have any idea what they were gonna do with. Well, so it seems like, yeah, I think now they have to be very careful planning, and so, like, I think when you're looking at, like, the DNA, Marvel has made a lot of mistakes, but I do think that you can't save your universe with one with one movie. But no. I think you're going to use, I think like when we, and we'll talk more about this when we get to Deadpool and Wolverine, I think they're going to start to build those pillars up with cornerstone projects. Yeah, I mean, I think they, so, I think in a way they can fix yes. it with one movie. The yeah. thing about like Secret Wars and yeah. Avengers 5 before it but you is, make sure that make you, or break. <laughs> you want to make sure that with a standalone movie though, that you start to earn credit back isn't before a, you get to the big, the big scale movie. Avengers 5 is like two years away but, and so they're gonna we move don't that. have a title. So from what we understand, they're moving those movies because right. they need more time. So they're going to announce at Comic-Con a bunch of projects, which we have in a later half of our segment. Let's go back to talk about Captain America so we can jump into Deadpool and Wolverine, then jump back. We'll jump back to these topics. we got to make sure we stay. So with Captain America 4. So I personally, after I have had the hardest time with this movie, for because this movie has constantly, as a Marvel fan, and people forget that... I've been a Star Wars fan for a long time. I've been a DC fan for a long time. I've been a fan of a lot of different things all my life. I've been a Marvel fan for a very long time. And I have felt through Phase 4 and even a lot of Phase 5 that I was being personally targeted with my interests and characters that I loved were being... We talked about Star Wars as being destroyed by these different creatives in our last podcast. Marvel has been doing that too. And and so that... And not only that, and so people talk about the whole idea of comic book... Movie fatigue, right? I know who the creator that's fucking all the Marvel movies up. It's Kevin Feige himself. That's true. That that's also it's true. not it's not because here's the thing he he stopped hiring actual creatives because yep. he's like I can manipulate this thing because of his ego. So he's like I'm just gonna stop. And you start seeing this. The first time we really saw this is when he fired Edgar Wright and replaced yep. him with very safe brain rot Peyton Reed. Yeah, agreed. The director of Jim Carrey's soft romantic comedy Yes Man as his most successful movie before Ant-Man. Yeah. And they fired the guy who is a world-renowned filmmaker because he didn't want to do Kevin Feige's stupid fucking ideas. Well, the problem is he's going <clears throat> after, like, with, with, with his projects, he go because of the Marvel mandate and the, and the formula they need, they go after the wrong the wrong people for their projects, and then they say, okay, you, you, you can work with us in a collaborative but, Yeah, they, I mean, they're going after them. They're going after the safest people. Yeah. The, but even when they go the after, like, say, so say they go for the really hard people, right? So, like, you say, like, you know, Edgar Wright. I feel like Edgar Wright is an amazing director, but he could never work at Marvel because he can't collaborate with what is needed to make Marvel sell. Yeah, I mean, so, don't so, collaborate. Don't collaborate because their collaborations are failing. <laughs> yes. Endgame worked because you had Jon Favreau, uh, James Gunn, the Russo brothers, and well, even the, the Russo brothers got Marvel affected where they haven't made a single good movie since they well, left. Well, yeah, and I, think, and, and I think that's why they decided to come, come back because they know that they need they to go better. back. They better, yeah. Yeah, so they have to collaborate with other people. And so that's the thing, that first team, I still say... So I know his time is going to come and I know he's going to change things. I still say that when Favreau's done with Mandalorian and done with this Mando and Grogu movie, jumping him over back over to Marvel in a leadership position is the smartest move. He knew more about Marvel than anyone besides Stan Lee in this company right now. Like, I think that he really understood Marvel. And the fact that they chose, like, they brought in Kevin Feige after he's worked on all these action movies and stuff. Look, they did what they did with him. He clearly wants to move on to other things. He wants to go over and fix Star Wars. Let him go over and do what he wants to do with Star Wars. Let Favreau run Marvel. I'm fine with that. I think that's right. the I think that's the plan. So like, back to Captain America. So it sounds like you know. So with my whole frustration with Marvel and stuff, 
Captain America is one of my favorite characters. And from the reports I've been hearing, so look, I was down with the Serpent Society. I wanted it to happen. I thought it would be great. Right. It seemed like it was a great move for the first Captain America movie. And like you, I had a bad taste in my mouth from Falcon and the Winter Soldier too. Because I did not like that... Look, I, I know Captain America, they gotta go political, but when you're gonna do villains, you have the opportunity to do a Captain America story, and whether it be Steve Rogers or the next Captain America, your first villain that you have on in, in your plan for setting up a Captain America show is a dancing fool when he has the comic book roots to be your main villain. When they did Civil War, and they had Zemo kind of just be the brains of uh, making Captain America and, and Iron Man fight. They right. should have elevated that in the next adventure to Zemo instead of being the dancing Tobey Maguire like moron in the background and with a purple mask for 2.5 seconds. Put him in the mask, make him the villain. Make the threat that Zemo has beef against. Oh, well, you know, because people forget. Okay, Zemo looks fucking ridiculous in his original costume, but I know you, what you're saying. He's like, a good he villain. He doesn't need the mask. Like, I mean, like the, mask looks, the mask is fine. It's yeah. the... It's like the fur coat and everything. Like, I, I he don't looks need like him a to pimp see the coat whole, and all I don't that. Need him He's to got see, the cane. I, like, I'm not saying you need to put him in this whole suit. I just think the actor they picked for Zemo and the character has a lot of connections to Captain America. He's one yeah. of Captain America's arguably, like, yes, you got to change it with the MCU. You can't make everything always comic book accurate. Sometimes you got to make changes. I'm fine with him. With the actor wielding a wielding a sword and just standing in the room, like, kind of just yeah. being threatening and posing. Uh, I mean, I think the problem with the Captain America or Falcon and the Winter TV show was the... It was just... I mean, I didn't know what it was trying to do. Well, even then the, it was But then the villains they tried to use was, was like... Well, then the villains that they used were just these weird, like, political, like, threat. Like, oh, look, we're the Flag Smashers. Like, they basically used kids that were, like, stirred wrong into, like, a whole thing. And then... I think they had a good idea with the whole Captain America impersonator, like the whole US John agent, Walker thing. Yeah. I think the USA thing is perfect. I think it's great. I think it sold what it needed to do, and I hope that they do better with it in Thunderbolts. Hopefully, but I got like when we get later into the podcast, I got some thoughts on Thunderbolts. I think Thunderbolts is going to be like Marvel's going to get hits, but they're not going to get out of this situation without without licking their wounds a little bit. They're going to be hurting still because to find that footing, you can't have everything be sunshine and rainbows right away. I think that while we're going to get hits, like hopefully Deadpool Wolverine, hopefully Captain America 4, hopefully all these things, we're going to get some losses, too. We're going to get some bad losses. And I think that... I don't, th- I don't, why is everyone mad about Thunderbolts? It looks fine. I well, mean, I, we'll, we'll looks get fine. to that. I have some issues with that I've heard about I'm it. sure it'll suck. I mean, most of this stuff yeah. sucks, but I well, haven't seen anything to... Well, I feel like the, we're excited about particularly. Well, they basically want to make Marvel Suicide Squad, but they've like picked the worst roster they could ever imagine. Yeah, I don't know why characters. it's Black Widow clone, like three Captain yep. America clones. And yep, yep, it's a bad roster. It's weird. And if you're gonna do Thunderbolts in the comments, Zemo's a Thunderbolt. So once again, another reason why Zemo would have been that could have been a movie that they could have made him right. stand out. And they, they keep underestimating what they could do with their original Marvel. This is what Marvel's problem is. Okay, I understand that. They want to do new characters, they want to do new stories. But you need to look, just like Disney with Star Wars, they keep missing out on, you need to follow your source material. You have books that show this character was a villain, they're a great villain. You cast cast a big actor to tell a good story, you bring them in. Like, for crying out loud, I love Civil War, but what they did to Frank Arillo as Crossbones, who is one of the characters that killed Captain America and one of the greatest Captain America stories of, like, all time. And you just, beginning act of Civil War, just take him out, just yeah. after he's built up his crossbones. Did they just waste that character? Thank God he's got a much more meaningful role at, at DC where he's going to go throw down with, uh, looks like Peacemaker, Peacemaker Superman, and yeah. the whole shebang. He's even in Superman. Like, James Gunn's like, oh, I see potential in this dude. I'm going to make Rick Flagg's dad come into everything. And it's like, good for him. Because he's a good actor that deserves... Just deserves that stuff, and I feel like that's really hard with these actors signing up. They they keep disrespecting it. I'm never one of my biggest. We want to talk about like missed opportunities and big problems. I'll still never forgive Marvel for um for misusing Scott Atkins in the first in in the first Doctor Strange movie. Oh yeah. Cause dude, I'm all down with the magic and stuff, but you know how many characters you had that Scott Atkins could have played that would have been actually awesome in Marvel that they could they squandered. Like dude, if you want to make Scott Atkins. If you want to make a really good Scott Atkins character, I've said, I've picked this for many years, and hopefully DC will do this, because I think DC would, this is the prime role for him. I think Marvel's big movies, when they did, when they did Black Widow, 
like they did the, the crappy female Taskmaster, right? right? If you want to make a really good, awesome Taskmaster like he's in the comics and some of the video games, Scott Atkins is the ideal choice to be a cool Taskmaster because with his whole abilities of like copying everyone's moves, with his like martial arts skills, imagine our, we get to an Avengers movie and Taskmaster's the threat and he's over there fighting like Black Panther or whoever other characters are there and they're doing their moves and he's just like, look at me, I can... I can kick the shit out of you. I can, I can yeah. do this. Like that would have been sick. Like, and hopefully DC remedies that by making uh, Scott Atkins their new Deathstroke. Because I, 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 I think that that's something I've talked about quite a bit. That I think over at DC that's some, a move they should make. Because I think, oh, yeah. I think he's perfect for it, and I think he could do it. That'd be and, cool. And so I think back to so we're talking Captain America four. So I feel like, so yeah, Marvel's made a lot of sins. There's been a lot of mistakes. This movie has put me on edge a lot because first of all, I forget what the title was originally, but they. I think it was New World Order originally. Yeah. And so, like, they changed this title. I still think, and hopefully the movie will sway me, but I still don't like Captain America Brave New World. It doesn't it doesn't sound like a like a title that makes me want to go see it, right? Like, like before the trailer's out, you, you just put, a, put it on paper, right? Captain America 4. Captain America Brave New World. Does that make you want to go see it? Like, I like, mean, like, like, my just, thinking is... Uh... You know they're trying. I think I think it's a Revenge of the Jedi, uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah that makes change sense. Where they said uh, New World Order, um, w- like what it, what our audience is gonna think of that? They're gonna think you know Thunderbolt Ross is gonna start being like Super Hitler or or fucking Captain America is he taking over the world? I think the idea of Brave New World is like. I think they were trying to edge it into a, from a marketing perspective, into like a hopeful note, like, yeah. oh, we got a new Captain America, and right. he's. I kind of like, I kind of like, blah, the, blah. I kind of like the uh, the New World Order because the idea of like we're getting a new Captain America, and part of the greatest thing about Captain America that they did in the MCU in the previous movies was establishing how someone who's existed since 1943 has to exist in a world where all his friends are dead, and now, right. and now in the modern world, how does Captain America? Thrive with who the government is today, ha! Because he used to, you know, stomp yeah, a grenade I mean, for everyone in any society. Now this is a modern day Captain America, someone who is has existed in this world for a long time. How does his ideals, how does his beliefs fit in with this new world? So, right. And I think you still do the same thing with Brave New World, but I think at first I was kind of turned off by the idea of it being, oh, uh, why? Because I don't like the idea of this. It seems like a dumb change, but. Title aside, I will say that this trailer pretty much erases all the fears I had for this movie because yeah. because I think that it it, it it establishes the things I wanted from this movie and I was worried about them sidelining Sam and and like there were some rumors a while ago when they were doing the roster for like the next couple of Avengers movies they didn't want Sam to be uh, to be the leader of the Avengers because he um, he doesn't have superpowers and they're like oh even though he's Captain America he hasn't taken the Super Soldier Serum and I'm like right. well that's kind of BS because Whoever is Captain America, they should be leading the Avengers, and do they have powers or not? Like Iron and, Man is kind of the other leader of the Avengers. That's what I was thinking. They're, they're both. It's, it's so, it's just so powers shouldn't make a super difference. Super suit, which is exactly what Sam Wilson. Yeah, is. that's what I'm saying. He's got wings, and no disrespect to Steve Rogers, but Shields, uh, but but Captain, but Steve Rogers at least at least Sam can fly. Unlike unlike our previous Captain America had to have Sam lift him around in the previous movies. So right. at least Sam can fly. And so, so I think things to look forward to, like, in this movie, the, the big takeaways I got is, so we're going for a political espionage, which we did kind of go for in in Civil War and Winter Soldier, but I feel like they, they realized, they really found that tone of balance and how that kind of right. worked. Well, and, that's probably why they got Harrison Ford, because that man loved to do political thrillers back in the day, so they're like, oh, you're going to be like the evil president and a political Well, thriller. I think the also thing, I, I'm actually really glad they got Harrison Ford in this role because I can make all the jokes about how Star Wars is so bad that even Han Solo left yeah. <laughs> to, to go over to Marvel. But, I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think Harrison Ford was happy they made a seventh Star Wars movie exclusively so they could finally kill off Han Solo. Well, he said that in interviews. He's confirmed it. So, yeah. but, but so I think with Harrison Ford in this situation, I really like the idea... That he's um, that he is. They're doing the evil president thing, and and I think like you know with Ross previously they used him in kind of like going toe to toe and going odds with Captain America. I like how one thing we have to establish this maybe the same character, but with the cha- with the recasting of characters, there's he's not trying to just be William Hurt's Ross. 
he's a new Ross with a new right. purpose and like like you know we know that Ross didn't like Sam Wilson or Steve Rogers and so I like I think miss people are misreading into the line um, of um, of that 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 Ross says to Sa- Sam is like you're not Steve Ro- you may be Captain America but you're not Steve Rogers and Sam agrees with him and like I think that's kind of a good thing because I think right. it kind of means that you know I think until the Red Hulk stage happens, which we talk about in the trailer, I think you can establish that they're gonna get a much better um, feel of things. Like I think right. that you, I think until that stuff happens, I, I wouldn't say they're best friends, but I think that in the trailer you get the vibe that he wants, for whatever reason, the Ross as president has ruffled some feathers in the wrong places, and right. people are coming for him. So he doesn't trust his own security detail to protect him. He wants Captain America to protect him. So I think you're gonna kind of see this this new thing they haven't done yet with Captain America, but Captain America kind of has to swallow his pride a little bit, and you know his job is to protect America and justice and the truth in the way that it is. And I think what better way to do an American patriotic story of a of a Boy Scout story than protecting the most powerful, most important man on the, on the planet? Right. And I think that that's a good I think that's a good a good story to tell, and I'm looking forward to how that works. But then also we got to get into this third act and how. Where does the Red Hulk stuff happen? Because we do know the leaders in this movie from um, from Incredible Hulk. You see him in the trailer, so that's gonna be right. interesting. We got the leader in there. There's another reason why Hulk is there. They just took and I think secretly I have 18 a theory, years to. Uh, yeah, I have a theory that the lead, that while Ross is kind of doing, kind of playing this act like he's in danger, I, I think that even though that is a serious threat for him, I think he's working something on the inside. I think the leader's gonna be the reason that he becomes Red Hulk. Oh yeah. Because I think the leader and him are actually. I mean, the leader's kind of. He was kind of behind like Abomination yep. and stuff in the first movie. Yeah. So the leader's gonna want to make yep. some sort of Hulk that can be fully weaponized and controlled and get his redemption against Banner. Yeah. One thing I'll say that one of the biggest surprises because this movie does look like it's got multiple antagonist things going on. One of the best things I think they took from Falcon and the Winter Soldier that it looks like they're continuing in this movie. I'm a hundred percent behind. The idea of taking Isaiah Bradley from Falcon the Winter Soldier and doing the Winter Soldier thing where he's a brainwashed agent. Oh, yeah. Because Sam had a bond behind him. And I think he looks really badass in this movie. Oh, yeah. And I heard from insiders that he's going to have a suit later. Like, he's going to get, like, they want to set up the whole idea because they're doing the Young Avengers thing. Because he was, like, the 60s, yeah. 70s Captain America, basically. Yes, yeah, so they're going to do a, they're going to do his, like, patri- a version of his Patriot suit eventually. Uh, so, yeah. So that would be cool. But I'm, I, I like the idea that Bradley kind of the whole assassination thing probably use a similar code phrase to what they did with Bucky to trigger him or something. Well, that could be him. some political intrigue too, where they yeah. like, it was probably the Russians or Hydra again or whatever. They probably and did something. And then it turns just, yeah. out it's like the U.S. themselves are kind of trying to copy the Winter Soldier. But, but we talked about how much they changed this movie. One of the biggest changes this movie that people don't know about is, because it was announced a few weeks before this trailer came out, is Gene Carl Esposito, Mr. Moff Gidding himself, yeah. was basically thrown in here in the beginning some people actually thought because he was dropped in so late in the game that he's gonna be like oh a cameo in here and then play another character and then and then maybe we'll see him in a show like he said because his big hint when he said he was playing a character before we got set photos of him in captain america was i'm gonna be in an upcoming marvel project you'll see me soon and i'm in a show and i've kind of debunked it i have a whole video about this coming out today i know did it he, he keeps saying we don't know what character he's playing but a lot of the insiders and in this trailer kind of proves what character he's going to play. And then I think that's much... Even though this is late, because of reshoots and stuff, this is late in the game. It seems like the reshoots were intense enough to add him into a much bigger part of this movie. So, mm. And I'll say this. He, well, he he's has, a good actor. So he, he has been talking good. about for a while that when he was joining Marvel, that like that they said he was going to be an original character. He's not going to be... like so There was rumors like, oh, he's going to be Doom. Oh, he's going to be this. He's going to be this big thing. I'm glad he's a new character. But he's not new in the sense that like he's gonna be someone we haven't seen before. It seems like it's gonna be much more towards diehard comic book fans. Right. Someone that which which I think is cool. I like the idea of him being so I think all his what other do roles. They, what do they think he's gonna be? Well, some people had you know, he had joked about he didn't want to be a villain anymore, so some people were like, oh he's gonna be the new Charles Xavier when they reboot the X-Men, which that ended right. up not being true. Then some people actually thought he'd be the new Kang. Because mm. the actor has that gravitas and the way that he But I don't think that's happening anymore. Um, I actually think the new Kang, and hopefully they'll announce this soon, because they said they're going to do new variants and different things. I think the new main Prime Kang that they want to be for Secret Wars and want to be the big the big battle of everything, what they tried to do with 
with Ant-Man, which is atrocious, um, with Jonathan Majors, I think they want to take uh, Denzel Washington's son mm. and they want to make him the big new, oh, yeah, the like big new John band. Washington, yeah, yeah. Whatever so I think he's got that. He's that actor that's got that gravitas, that that feeling. I think a Washington could really make people kind of turn their heads and go, oh, this oh, guy. Oh, David Washington. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, because he, he was pretty great in Yeah, tenet. he was good in tenet. Yeah, so I think I think he could pull it off. I, but so I think with this movie, That'd you know, we, we, we got our we got our political we got our political world saying we're gonna see Cap. Captain America. I kind of also dig the idea that, like, you know, even though Steve's always had, like, his partners, like, he had Sam and he had Bucky, I kind of like that, uh, in, in Falcon and Winter Soldier, they established that, that Sam had a wingman. I kind of like in this trailer that there's a lot of the new Falcon and, yeah. and, and Cap working together. And I mean, that's good. Yeah, I, I think, think that's cool. I think especially if they want to do a franchise out of Thunderbolts, you kind of yeah. gotta leave U.S. Agent Winter Soldier to them, and then maybe in Cap 5 or something, they'll all bump heads as the extended I also weird think that this, Captain America. I don't know how many more trailers we'll get for this movie, because I know this movie comes out in February and it comes out next year, but what I do know is yeah. the, the original plan, and this sounds like I've heard from sources this is still true, this movie is going to essentially be a movie that is going to, even though it's treated like a political movie, it's going to be a very essential movie to what comes forward in the MCU, because of the fact that I think they're going to use this movie. That's why I think you're going to get characters like Hulk and maybe even a few other surprise characters. Because I've heard that they're going to use this movie to... Uh, we're going to see a new Avengers team in this movie. Because yeah. what, 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 what I have heard for a while was... Or that, they're going to start putting it together or something. Yeah, I think they'll start putting They kind of got to establish an official roster. Well, yeah, because one of the biggest question marks in the MCU right now is that we haven't seen the Avengers since Endgame. Like, yeah. you know, we saw Spider-Man, we saw Doctor Strange, we saw... And, and, you know, none of the shows have established what's the status of the Avengers. Like, they say, oh, Chris, they said in Falcon and Winter Soldier that maybe Captain America's on the moon. Like, you know, they were saying Steve Rogers might be on the moon or doing some little in, in adventure. I thought they were mostly joking about that. Maybe they're being serious. But um, like some people have said that we might see Old Man Rogers in some capacity again. Because I'm like Tony. Like, they can put Chris Evans in that makeup anytime they want. As far as we know, Steve's not dead, unlike Tony was. So, right, like, no, he's just so, old as shit. Yeah, so they want to... I mean, I still think... I've joked about this for they a while. They did that in the comics when... When, uh... When Falcon originally became Captain America in, like, 2014 or whatever, that's... I always joked about a, uh... I always joked about a kind of, like, a Clint Eastwood, um... Because I know Deadpool really looks up to... Looks up... Looks up to Captain America... I love the idea of a Punisher, um, Deadpool, and Steve, Ro old man Steve Rogers, kind of like Clint Eastwood type, like, like rated R, mm. like kind of camaraderie story, would be pretty fun. Yeah. Just the idea of like, I, I kind of would love an old man Steve Rogers, maybe like a home invasion story where someone sneaks up on his property, kind of pulls the old man, man stunt and just straight up home invasion, like Clint Eastwood badass type. Yeah. Just like, I think that'd be fun. Like Chris Evans to play old man Steve, get off my lawn. Just like, gotta be crazy. But so I, I think, think I, I think we should uh, in, we should transition over to Deadpool three. Yeah. yeah so the um, final thing I was gonna add with oh, the yeah. Captain America Sorry. thing was just that I think it's awesome that out of all the things like you know we've seen Esposito in so many amazing roles now. He's been in The Boys. He's been in he's been great as Moff Gideon. It's great that he's played those kind of characters, Moff Gideon. You know, Wheel in the White Side that was cool. But he's said in many interviews and stuff that you know this character, especially more recently now that there's actual footage of him. He promised it would be a badass character, and and not that his other characters weren't, but you know, with Star Wars, you're in kind of that fictional world of like, oh, I got a lightsaber. It's kind of, it's not as cool. Like, it's you could say it's badass as from a Star Wars perspective, but this is like real gritty, like, kind of badass. So, like, I think he's going to play a character called George Washington Bridge, and I think the essential is that this is going to kind of be like, there's a new shield in this movie, but I think the new shield is bad. And then mm. this is going to be the new, like, terrorist organization, maybe even the new Hydra, and he's the new lead. Oh, And yeah. so I think his role is going to be, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sam and be badass. Like, I yeah. want to see Moff Gideon throwing sidekicks, like, throwing knives at people. And in terms of, like, he said that he'd appear in this movie and then be on a show, I want to I want to propose where I think he'll pop up next that makes sense to me. I think he's going to be, if he is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, even though it is, because this is more one of those more darker, grittier Marvel movie, even with the idea of Red Hulk in it. Yeah. I, I think he's going to be in Daredevil next. I oh, think, I think my, sure. my prediction is I think he'll pop up as a threat. 
mm. for Matt Murdock to go up against. Because Kingpin might need him, or if he's working for the government, we know Kingpin's going to have ties. I don't know if you saw yeah. Echo, but at the end of Echo, they established that Wilson Fisk is going to be no, the mayor. I, I skipped Echo for you sure. So all you need to know is the end of Echo sets up Daredevil Born Again, all the other stuff, by basically saying Kingpin is now going to outlaw all, all vigilantes from... Did you ever read the, uh, the Devil Reign storyline from the comics? No, I actually didn't. So they're doing Devil Reign, and Devil Reign is mm. basically all superheroes that are basically wearing masks. Vigilantes outlawed. No, and yeah, so I think I've had I had some single issues and stuff. I was aware of it. I just haven't actually. And there is basically the a thing where the, the set story. photos for Daredevil they they established that um apparently in the set photos you can see um there's a new squad of like vigilante anti task force that mm. are repping Punisher. And we know John Bernthal is going to be in the series of Dead Old Born Again. I don't think he's going to be happy about people. No. <laughs> he's going to smash some skulls in for sure. So, so I'm, so well, I'm happy. I know that's a thing like yeah. certain certain people use that usually aren't super savory. They like stealing that Punisher logo. Yep. So people are a little pissed about it. I'm glad they're tying up with that because I always wanted to it. see what Frank would do if he saw people wrapping his symbol that that's his his thing. So yeah, so I, I think Captain America looks awesome. I can't wait to see when we get more trailers, more information. Love that Esposito's in it. We got the leader, yeah. we got Red Hulk to look forward to. So yeah, I'm excited. But let's 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 go into the segue over the fact that Deadpool and Wolverine comes out next week. So we're segueing into Deadpool and Wolverine. So yep. um, you want to start this one? I'll start it. Yeah, so Deadpool and Wolverine are coming out after a uh about nine month absence without Marvel in theaters because yeah, the Marvels kind of came out in November, which is a pretty long time because uh, I think Marvel started seeing where the tides were going and pushed mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff back and whatever. Um, I think Deadpool and the Wolverine looks like a really desperate attempt to attempt to save Marvel. Yeah. Um, and. There's a lot of reasons I think it's probably... I mean, the movie might be fine, but there's a lot of reasons I think a lot of things they're doing are ill-advised. Um, but I also think it might just be terrible dog shit. And the main reason is, a few years ago, Ryan Reynolds made a movie with Sean Levy called Free Guy. And it was just fan bait, Deadpool, but PG-13. And now they're doing Free Guy again, but rated R in the Marvel Universe. And I just think that sounds kind of lame to me. Also, yeah. bringing back Hugh Jackman, it's like, that's great, but how long can you stretch Hugh Jackman? You really think you're getting 10 years out of Hugh Jackman? I also think it's going to make even more unfavorable comparisons when they try to bring in Wolverine, who's the biggest X-Men character, and they need new big characters. So yep. they're basically wasting... Wolverine to make this one movie be successful. I think honestly, Logan was such a good wrap up for the character. Why not just leave it at that and try to make a new Wolverine? Because I know right. Hugh Jackman's going to sell a lot of tickets for the one or two appearances yep. he does, but then fucking what are you going to do? Well, from you don't got sounds, anybody. <laughs> from what it sounds like, it sounds like that while we are bringing back some old favorites, I think they are going to start to bring in some of the heavy hitters into fruition, but I think they just got to wait to when the right moment like there are some of the characters that if they develop them better i think they could they have more standing and could be great original characters that don't have a lot of that other than diehard comic book fans they don't know them as well like i'm still hoping like uh you have that guy that did shang chi right dustin daniel crenton yeah i i know he backed off from avengers i hope he puts all his time and energy into making not that shang chi one was bad but I want him to find a way to make the sequel even more memorable than the first movie. And one of the ways that I think he should do that is make the sequel tie in. We, I think Marvel, look, we have Daredevil who's who's got the lawyer thing and he can kick ass and he's got the batons, right? But I want a character that Marvel should have, like, in the previous, maybe it's just me. But when you want a new cool character that's going to stand out, right? Um, you have, Daredevil's great, but Daredevil doesn't have any powers other than his radar sense. Captain America's ability was that he he could fight, but he was a physical peak human ability. With Shang-Chi, you have a rare opportunity here. You have oh, a Jackie yeah. Chan level martial arts character, but someone who's wielding the rings, and unlike his father, you could make that like, this could be like the new Doctor Strange thing, but without being the master of the mystical arts, it could be 
This is exactly why I wanted Marvel to save Scott Atkins for a better project. Because I think he would have made a great antagonist in those franchises. I think they should have done a Shun Chi too. But I think the other problem with Marvel is they established like 14 new franchises yeah. since Endgame has ended. And uh, none of them has gone anywhere. Well, all these. WandaVision, they say they're making. Yeah. They got the stupid looking Agathas. And, the, and, then, and they got watch. the Vision show they're trying to do too, which is stupid. Maybe. I mean, they've announced a million projects. So, so the way I, don't I see really it, the, like, trust that anything's coming out. I feel not. like they should focus on the characters that people want to see more from. Like. Shang-Chi like, was great. Eternals, yeah. they can throw away. Yep. Black Widow, I don't know why they waste their time. What about Moon Knight? Do you Black think they Widow? can remedy Moon Knight? You think Moon Knight can. I don't like the direction place. they went with Moon Knight. But do you think they could change it? Like, do you think they could do some rethinking and adapt it better based on what they previously do? Because I heard they yeah, I guess so. I, I heard I, they might announce at Comic Con because they're setting up Midnight Suns that that he might get a second season. Apparently, I, I think might they should just director. make fucking movies and stop yeah. with the stupid. TV or stuff. I liked when they were doing like for like two weeks. They're like, what about the Marvel Spotlight idea? Yeah, I was. And they did on. two of those in a row, and then they dropped it. Why not just make like a really good like hour long She Hulk movie instead of seven yeah. episodes? Well, apparently Miss they're Marvel still do... or whoever you want to introduce in the background. Apparently the spotlight characters. brand still exists because they're gonna do Daredevil Born Again is gonna be under spotlight because the other MCU content that we're getting right other than Deadpool. No, Marvel, that's right? Marvel Knights because they brought they brought in the Marvel Knights banner for Echo. Yeah, but but with Echo they also established that they put it under this new thing called Marvel Spotlight and so Marvel oh. Spotlight. Marvel Spotlight is going to be their way to, with the Disney guidelines, of shying away from, not not having to shy away from right. the violence and the other stuff, so they put it under Spotlight. So Daredevil apparently, because apparently, and we'll see what they do, because I thought Echo's promotion, they kept trying to push this heavy, like, super violent thing. I don't even thought, Echo, be it, it didn't, bothered to remember that Echo came out. It, it didn't, I'll be real with you, those, those promotions of it being so violent and so brutal, there was maybe two scenes that it actually lived up to that promise. Only two. So yeah. So I so I feel like I just hope that's that why. I mean, that's what Deadpool three is gonna be. Let's be honest here. Well, I see. I, I everyone's gonna say it's a, like the old ones, but I mean, it's it's gonna be an MCU movie with a couple well, f well, words and maybe a couple like bloody scenes. Well, see, I'm kind of curious because like I thought try that they were gonna trick people. I thought they were gonna try and trick people, but I'm actually getting a lot more hope out of it now because I saw an I, interview. I, I, with... I don't trust Sean Levy. I don't trust Ryan Reynolds. You don't trust. I don't, I don't trust either, okay. either of them. You don't trust. Who Hugh Jackman maybe would be cool, but I feel like you know. I heard they're that, gonna say whatever they say. I heard Hugh specifically said that he was surprised that Disney was allowing them to do. I mean, what they did. The so. other thing is like we've gotten some looks at the movie. Like for example, there's the little like in universe or not uh, kind of like non-canon like preview where they tell you to shut off your phones. Yep. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what I expected the movie to be. Well, apparently they confirmed that dead, to... they they confirmed that apparently Wolverine's not going to break the fourth wall like he does in that thing. No, in the movie. I know. So, yeah. so, but I think the other thing that that they that, that they've established um, is um, um, so, so the one thing that they've established is that basically he's gonna like when they do things here. They've also said, like, with the trailers they put out, like, when they were releasing tickets for the movie, right? They've had to hold back on mm. certain footage because there's certain things they're not allowed to show. And not just in terms of spoilers. They said, like, literally marketing. There's things they're not allowed because of Disney's rules and stuff. They can't show. Like, so... Maybe there'll be some surprises in there. We'll have to see. Yeah, but I mean that's something they'd say to market the movie. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to see what. what like, once again, we have to see. I also only... like Sean Levy. I mean, his best movie is The First Night at the Museum. He's made yeah. nothing else that's even remotely that's good, and that's a cheesy 2004 no, children's trust, comedy. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say ben that I trust Sean Levy on his own. I'm looking more of this as a. I, I know that Kevin, based on I saw, there's an interview out there with the Marvel executives. And there's an interview with Bob Iger, Kevin Feige, and a bunch of the other Disney execs. And they're sweating in this interview. Like, if this movie is not good, they're in trouble. Because oh, yeah. the amount of stuff that they've put well, into it I mean, they can't is... just will it to be good. You yeah. know, you got to actually try to make a good movie. They literally have said so many times that they tried so hard just to make a movie that Marvel fans would like. Because they said that they have right. been in such hot water that they know they need it to be good. So yeah. they put they put all their research like there's a lot of projects that you can tell that Kevin Feige doesn't even have any presence near the project. Where I heard both Captain America, um, 
uh, both both Captain America Brave New World he had to be on set for he had to be in the writers room and with Deadpool and Wolverine they had to come to him specifically like Sean Levy had to bring all his ideas to him had to tell him then he had to you know I'll say this is gonna work or this isn't gonna work okay we gotta do this right. and like that he's more involved now and and that could be a good thing or a bad thing I think that's a bad see. thing. I mean, look at... I mean, studio interference. You can't just... One guy's not the genie of making good stuff. No, no, but I heard that they wanted this to be more of a collaborative experience. So I think that they got more people... I don't know how much... I never hear, I want to collaborate with a studio exec- executive. That's not something any filmmaker... Except like a Peyton Reed or a Sean Levy. Well, with Marvel, that's say. how they found their magic cooks in the kitchen originally. Was that they had people that were all collaborating and all working... And sharing original ideas together, right? So you had no, when they founded Avengers, you had all these people. Yeah, you know, even back okay, in the Whedon era, the first Avengers movie and number two are both. Can we? Are we? Are we able to look back and finally say they're not very good? Yes, I agree. Avengers two is shit. The first Avengers had moments, but the cinematography in that movie is god awful. And uh, the my problem with the Avengers movies too, especially number one and two, is they just. Uh, use it as a delete character arc moment mm-hmm. for especially Iron Man. Um, but regardless, yeah. Um, I mean, I just I just worry because I mean nobody's perfect. Avenger. The thing was, I think they went on a run with phases two and three where there were only a couple blemishes, and now well, they're my at problem. a point where it's more blemish than good. And I think that's just. I mean, well, I, I think- don't know how you save it without making better kit without you know. Well, my, 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 my hope is that they're go, or my make, hope is that they're going to use this movie as kind of a springboard because what I've heard them say one of the biggest things that I'm holding on to hope for one of my biggest fear about this movie was you know I'm very vocal of not liking Multiverse of Madness yeah now one of my biggest issues was when they announced Deadpool and Wolverine my biggest issue I have with this movie was that I saw all the cameos as being hey look who this is and then they get killed. I think but, it is a very solid chance that is exactly what the cameos are in this And movie. I thought they were going to do that, but then I got this, I, I, as, as I've gotten more bigger in my YouTube popularity, I started talking, I started talking to some higher up people, and I got some information about certain cameos, and some of those cameos we can even dive into here, I heard that there's certain people in this movie, there may be a few of those cameos that are like, oh, blink and you'll miss it, oh, they're, 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 they're there, they're dead, right? But there are specific people they put in the movie that one of the things reasons they can't show certain parts of the movie is because certain characters that were announced by big like so like we'll say news outlets like like, like deadline right they announced jennifer gardner's electra she's in the movie she's not in a single trailer right so she's not a cameo she's in the movie considerably but from okay. what I, but from what i heard was they don't want to show her even though why the, uh, why would they dig up jennifer gardner's electra I have no idea. Because Kevin Feige is doing this weird thing where, like, you remember he worked with Fox back in the day, yeah. And, and on the no, most, he, of, I think he produced Daredevil and Electra. Yeah. So, so what why. they're what they're doing is it's kind of him playing his greatest hits. He's pulling up the multiverse because apparently this movie is going to bounce like the people. Since we're doing the multiverse, you know they have the whole 20th Century Fox logo thing in the void, right? So, right. so they're doing the whole thing where they're digging up the multiverse variants from the Fox stuff, like. Like, we've, we've heard Chris Evans was going to be in the screen. There was one scene where, like, there was archive footage of him as Captain America, as Deadpool's kind of being shown things on the TVA. But apparently Chris Evans is in this movie twice, where he's not just as that archive. Human Torch comes back, too. Oh. And so he's... Oh. And so Human Torch, Channing Tatum finally gets to play Gambit. Um, X-23 from Logan, but not the same version of Logan, right? Other variant, whatever they want to spin it on. Even though Daphne Keene's pulling Andrew Garfield and keeps trying to say in interviews, I'm not in the movie. Oh, yeah. I, I don't believe her. Um, and all these characters, even Wesley Snipes played, they're supposed to be in the movie enough that they're a significant enough... Like, basically, they're supporting characters in this movie. They're, they're going to be supporting characters. They're not going to be cameos. They're going to be... I mean, I guess if they, like do it right where they're like oh these are a group of misfits that well from what it sounds like they're the doing Avengers. is like so, so you have this new villain right they have a whole from the deep comics they have the whole Charles Xavier um sister villain right oh sure so, so what they have established is cause they're not gonna be able to do Kang for a long time they have to start establishing if we're gonna do the multiverse the multiverse is massive so there's other multiverse villains out there. No one wants... I mean, I just... I, Marvel... Okay, Marvel was never a multiverse company until Spider-Verse happened. Yep, yep. And that fucked true. it up. 
Yeah, DC I knew how to do the multiverse. Marvel, DC was the grand godly multiverse, and Marvel was the personal, interpersonal stories. Well, that's the one Spider-Man thing I have... swings by the Fantastic Four's window. Well, that's the one. And I think I have... that's something that Kevin Feige and Disney doesn't understand: is that the multiverse is fucking stupid and macro and annoying. Uh, and I mean, at least DC kind of wants to wants to do stuff, but you only have a crisis every once in a while. Then you got normal stuff. The problem is. You keep throwing multiverse movies out there, and no one fucking cares. No one's cared about the multiverse. The only time they cared is when Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield showed up. Sure, people care about Hugh Jackman, but we don't need multiverse villains. Let's stop with the multiverse. I think it's stupid as fuck. <laughs> yeah, well, in I my think, opinion. I mean, I feel like that with the multiverse, they're they're just gonna kind of expand. That there's other worlds out there that they're gonna use. The, I, I, I do agree that I feel like they stole this whole multiverse thing from DC. And I feel that they're trying to, well, Marvel has always had better success than DC has in the past. They're trying to uh, basically remedy their whole multiverse vision thing. But I think that they're, they've gone about this in the wrong way. And I hope that the way that they do this is, one of the things that Endgame and Infinity War did really well is you can do servable fan service without making it feel like it's, Forced or like that. Right. It's so I just hope that with these cameos and these character appearances, that they use these characters in ways that fit the story. So one of the things I heard about the movie is that you know how you see. Did you see the one? Did you see the the trailer thing they put out where um where Sabretooth shows up from the old 2000s X Men movie? Oh yeah. So I what I'm we, we know that Cassandra Nova has these um these thugs are like other X Men villains from the past other universes. And it's not just me X Men villains. Apparently it's gonna be other universes but we know you got the old pyro back and all these other characters now what i'm hoping is there's a scene in the trailer where with all the background like music playing and stuff and deadpool wolverine look like they're tearing up a group of villains there's things that just like in the spider-man no way home trailers that things clever editing is being used to hide like you know mm. someone took a paintbrush over it and they hit it but even the best editors um that i've noticed aren't able to beat my trained eye to use oh. i've been doing hundreds of train of trailer breakdowns of things i already think and i've been meaning to do a video on it for a long time i already think you can see electra in the trailer they they think that they're being good about hiding it but there's one thing that they mess up unless deadpool's using more than just swords and guns that makes me think we've already seen electra because mm. that scene when you see all of them brawling at the uh at the at the ant-man skull that's like their base right yeah. You see swords, and you see Wolverine's claws. It's a blink and you'll miss it second. But you can see size slicing something up. And I'm like, yep, I'm pretty sure that's Elektra. Now, now Deadpool has used um, other weapons in video games and comics before. Like, it's not out of the question that he could use size alongside swords. But there's another thing I noticed that in the frame when you're seeing all of them fight, there's a figure in the scene that is wearing red clothes. That doesn't look oh. like the weapons are linked to Deadpool wearing them. So well, it's probably gonna be like Lady Pool or something like well, that. Well, she doesn't use size as much either. But though, though, you know the Lady Pool thing's interesting because so many people have theorized about who's gonna play her. I think it's easily knowing Ryan Reynolds. It's easily gonna be his wife. It's easily gonna be Blake Lively because oh, yeah. he likes to do things. There's all these bogus make rumors the of it's gonna be. Cheer. There's so many nonsense things. Oh, it's gonna be Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift's good friend. How long? Like, how long is this movie supposed to be? It sounds like there's like 200 characters. I have no yeah. grip on what type well, of the plot room, you're the, supposed to make. And the who, time is let, let to me be. ask honestly. Yeah. Who in the fucking right mind likes the Electra movie? Like, why does anyone want Jennifer Garner back? She's not even like. Who gives a fuck about Jennifer Garner? She's Ben Affleck's ex-wife. I mean, since the early 2000s, she did some good stuff, but, like, I, I don't understand why why, why anybody would care about Jennifer Garner coming back. I, I feel like, honestly, like, this is why I don't want to see this movie. Like, just come up with a fucking plot and do it, you know? It sounds like there's a million characters, and, like, they're, they didn't learn their lesson at all from Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, where you just had a bunch of people show up for no reason and die. I think that this movie is going to be like, it's going to use those characters sparingly. So I think what they're going to do in, in their plan is, unlike Once There's a Madness, these aren't just characters from other worlds that are going to like... One thing I've heard about this movie is that, so, what, while you might have your opinion about Secret Wars and you think it's going to be, it, it's not well planned, 
it sounds like this movie plants the seeds for Secret Wars. Oh, yeah. And I have heard that there's... I saw a report the other day that said that Fox X-Men characters that we've seen before are not showing up in this movie and then just getting killed. They're going to be in other, other movies. They should just get killed because here's the thing. They need to make a new X-Men if they want to save the MCU. But they can't make a new the, X-Men the right The Fantastic now. Four is all they got. Why can't they make a new X-Men? Well, I heard that they're... They gotta wait a little longer because that that deal they made to get Fox back, that apparently the, the to make a new universe of X Men movies, that deal still has to be like properly marinated in order for them to do it. And like doing a whole new team, it's really hard for them because well, they shouldn't be burning the X Men right away. That's that's my opinion. I, I don't think we should see the X Men at all until I mean like maybe tease them at the end of Deadpool, tease a new team. But these but I don't want to see like James Marsden come back. No one cares about James Marsden. Really? I, I want to see... I'm fine with Hugh Jackman coming back for a movie, I guess. I would prefer he didn't... I'd prefer well, they just did a new Wolverine and well, made him iconic. Were, like, well, it feels well, like they're trying to leech everything out of the old movies that they had nothing to do with. Well, people are saying that they did him... That they did uh, James Marston Cyclops dirty and, like, how they killed him in the they first did. two. And so, some people are saying they want to, like, remedy that with this. And, like, even though there's no evidence of him being in this movie other than a few minor set photos I've heard popping around yeah i've heard that he might um i heard that he might actually end up um leading into another couple of movies just because but i think there's other things that we got to talk about is all right yeah one, one of the things that i think is an issue with this God movie that I'm, speed if all this is true i think uh marvel is fucked well i don't think i i don't think like we don't know the context of it yet like um, from what i know like the storyline of the overall movie which is kind of weird, is that apparently, you know, apparently in Deadpool's life, he's kind of at a low point. He's basically selling cars because he's like, him and Vanessa broke up for whatever reason. Even though he just yeah. brought her back because of time travel, why would you, after you save someone's life, why would you break up with someone? That just seems kind of weird. And and then apparently that she he's like, it's worthless. He hasn't been Deadpool anymore. He's just walking around with a wig, selling cars and being weird. And then... Apparently, the t he has his, like, big party. Even Vanessa's there as a friend. And then, mm. apparently, the TVA snatch him up. And then, they're like, we need you. And the first thing they need him to do is that there's this big multiversal threat looming over everything. And so, they it's so big. And it threatens the entire world. They're pretty existing. And it sort of sounds like they're tying in events from Deadpool 2. That's basically, it's kind of Deadpool's fault that this multiversal threat is happening. Oh. Because, remember when he went back in time and... Saved Vanessa, also killed Ryan Reynolds um, by destroying him before he makes Green Lantern, and then goes and interacts with his old variant of himself from X Men Origins Wolverine oh, yeah. and kills him. That has ramifications for timelines. We've seen timeline movies countless times. What the TBA does is keep tabs on that shit. And so what Deadpool did is it has huge ramifications. And so what it sounds like is he gets roped back in being Deadpool again because the TBA needs him. And they're, they're basically stating that there's a massive multiverse villain, and there's a massive multiverse plan, and the, the only person that can lead or, like, plan for this multiverse... Because I think what they want to do is, with these new Avengers movies, the next two that are coming out, they want to have a new leader that hasn't led the Avengers that isn't... Because we don't have Steve Rogers, we don't have, we don't have Cap, right? They want new leaders, and we're showing new heroes leading the team. Sure. And so what they want to do is, forever, how, however long we have them in this universe... They want to see a movie where, even though he led the X-Men, they want to see Wolverine lead kind of a new Multiverse Avengers. And so the plan mm. is Wolverine's going to be, you know, he saved the multiverse in Days of Future Past. So, well, not multiverse, but he saved the universe, right? right. So, like, th they know he's good at saving the day. And so, th and he and his whole request was that he wants to t be paired up with a variant of Iron Man and, and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, like, all that stuff that they tried to get to. But it sounds like he's down for... Being, but what's interesting is this Wolverine we get is a very jaded Wolverine. Yeah, I so think being, I think if they if they want to do a multiverse Avengers, I'd be fine with it. Put yeah. put Hugh Jackman on, on the bench until Secret Wars, and then maybe something happens and he's hanging out with a like a, an all star Avengers team. Like it'd be kind of fun to see like him, Tobey Maguire. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I think they'll all interact. A couple other 
Yeah, I think maybe a see... couple other big guys. Wesley Snipes, Blade. You get some like the All Stars. Like I don't want it to be every fucking person. I don't want to see a. I don't want to see Jennifer Garner as Electra. If I see that, I'm walking out the theater. I'm never I... watching a Marvel movie again. I don't think she. I, I, I think there's certain people that like they're bringing in because it's fun, and then there's people that are meant to stay, right? So like, I think Jennifer Garner's Electra. Yeah, she's in this movie. I don't think anyone should stay. I think everyone should go, and Marvel should close the universe off and, and wipe their hands away. I'm fine with it like being like a multiverse crazy epic movie and Secret Wars if that's what they need to do and like you can have little ones here and there but you gotta focus on the universe itself. If you're trying to bring in a thousand other things and do this and that gimmick you're gonna ruin it even worse than it already is. Right. And you know they're on a downward spiral. They need to save something before Bob Iger says bye Kevin Feige we're doing a reboot. Yep. <laughs> like or whoever replaces Bob Iger, because I know he's getting out in a couple years again. Yep. Um, you got they gotta they gotta play it smart, and I think the multiverse and the multiverse saga has been such a double-edged sword. Because you got something like Spider-Man, which does really good for Sony, <laughs> and then you had Loki, which came out to good acclaim the first season at least. And what else does the multiverse have to show that's actually given Marvel Studios? <laughs> A leg up, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you got Loki. <laughs> That's what they got. Cause no one liked Doctor Strange. It didn't make much money. Uh, Kang and and the Ant Man movie was an embarrassment. Uh, I mean, Dead. This is the whole multiverse saga is riding on Deadpool. And I think if Deadpool three like fails critically and commercially, which I don't think it will fail commercially at least. I think critically it might be. Too late to save, especially with Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds in the pilot seat. But well, I guess we just gotta wait and see where things. Um... I think I think we're gonna learn a lot more about the future of the MCU in about two weeks when all the dust is settled on what Deadpool three is looking like. Is well, it a hit? Also... Is it making a lot of money? Right. Do people like it? Yeah, and none of also... this we know yet, and we can't trust first reaction reviews because Disney always gets the good yeah, I'm first not... reaction. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't trust. Are... I've learned to not trust first reaction reviews because of things. I'm going based on hard evidence of what I've heard based on from my sources that I use for a lot of my videos. I go from information people that actually have insider information that know things, and what I've heard mm. about the movie is that Marvel had to make sure that no matter what your opinion of what you're what you're hearing, I've heard that. They had to make sure that this was, like, they had to run up all the channels and everything to make sure that this was a success before they even greenlit. Right. So, they they think that, and like I said, it could change based on opinion, but they think that they have a winner, not just multiverse movie. They think they have a good movie. Like they think it's, they, they think it's fun. They think it's action packed. They think it's, it's not. I've heard it's not a cameo fest. I heard there's characters that are in it. There's surprises. I did hear that some of the fun is the variants of the when you have Deadpool and Wolverine, we're going to these other Earths. Unlike Multiverse of Madness, we're gonna see actual other universes. It's so like Multiverse of Madness, you know we're only in a couple places. I've heard here we see like we might go to the Savage Land from the comics. Oh, yeah. We might go like we might see di dinosaurs and stuff. I also heard that there was something where they let some people attend some big publicity people got to attend a uh, big event of the first thirty five minutes of the movie. Oh. And they've been holding off stuff from that first 35 minutes of the movie from the trailers because they don't want to show stuff because there's big surprises. And oh, yeah. one of the things they held out was apparently we know there's going to be other variants. Apparently there's going to be other variants in this movie because Deadpool goes on a quest to find Wolverine. But because Deadpool is the fourth wall break guy that he is, right? There's other actors in this movie that have been paid a check that aren't Hugh Jackman. And so Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool is supposed to come to the conclusion that all these Wolverine aren't Wolverine because they're not the Wolverine I need being Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. So apparently it might take a little time to get to that oh, realization. That's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, so and so I've heard I know Cavill is might, might be in the first 35 minutes of this movie. I heard Cavill might be a Wolverine in the brown and yellow suit. And apparently one of the things that they wanted to do even though they keep having to lock him in the basement once again, you know. In did you ever see uh, Sean Levy's movie um, uh, Adam Project? No. So in Adam Project, there's oh yeah, no, I watched yeah, the Adam Project. Yes. Was that him? Yeah. So there's a oh. scene. So there's a scene in Adam Project where they have the, where they have no like way. a little cooler and they have Ruffalo and uh, Ryan Reynolds interacting. 
Uh, oh, wait, no, I haven't seen the Adam Project. Okay, so in Adam Project, there's a scene where... I was um, thinking a totally different Yeah, movie. so in the Adam Project, there's a scene where... Um, so basically, it's, it's a time travel movie, and you have, like, Ryan Reynolds plays a character, and then his son is played by Walker Scoble or whatever, the guy from the new Percy Jackson show, and he's a little kid, right? And then you have, like, Ryan Reynolds' dad is played by Mark Ruffalo. And there's a scene in Adam Project where there's a cooler, and the cooler has stickers of Deadpool and Hulk kind of making fun that these are who those actors are, right? And so, the reason why I'm going with this is, so, in that, you remember that little clip, little little footage that we talked about with the Sabretooth thing? Yeah. In the, in the scene, you see, um, I think that they're editing the dialogue with that scene. Because the scene where Deadpool and Wolverine had just fought, all Deadpool's weapons are in Wolverine's body, and he pulls them out, and he says, Oh, no, no, you gotta look your best. Fans have waited years to see this matchup. And I'm like, look, we saw Wolverine versus Sabretooth in the early 2000s X-Men movies. Right. We've seen Wolverine versus Sabretooth in X-Men Origins Wolverine. People did not wait years to see Wolverine fight Sabretooth. They, they waited something else. And so I have a theory. And so my theory is, from what I've heard from the information that people that leaked out the first 35 minutes, apparently, apparently we see Cavill fight Ruffalo. Oh. Because they've done the whole Hulk versus, people want the Hulk versus Wolverine thing more than anything. I'm frankly surprised that we're not, that this movie isn't going to give us Jackman versus him, because Jackman's the one that really wants that. But I think it's kind of cool if it's true that Cavill could fight could fight him because I think Cavill being in, a, even though it's a cameo, I don't think Cavill's gonna be in a lot of the movie. If your cameo time is to fight the Hulk, that's a pretty good use of your cameo time. Like getting to fight the Hulk might be kind of cool. Right. I also was kind of worried that if Cavill was gonna play a Wolverine variant, they're gonna do the stupid thing where it's just gonna be Wolverine looking like Henry Cavill and he's got like the leather jacket, like pants. I'm glad he gets a suit. Right. I think it's cool that he's gonna be in the brown and gold suit we don't see used very often the brown and gold suits is the best suit i love that suit. so you're not a fan of the blue no i like blue and yellow i yeah. just think brown and gold's my favorite oh it like, looks awesome you when know, i was a kid that was the one i was always playing as you know i know you don't do the i know you don't shit. do the uh i know you don't do the uh um the you, you didn't you didn't watch actor 97 but like in extra 97 because you don't do disney plus and stuff you get to actually see wolverine down that costume oh really yeah he actually puts it yeah. on I want to see X Men '97 at some it's, point. I'll check it out, but you can't never say that that show is a part of the MCU. But I think it can be argued that that show, well, just being on Disney Plus, even more, even more than some of the Star Wars projects, there's an argument to be made that it is the best thing on Disney Plus right now, mm. and it's animated because it is literally they got a team of writers that understand what they're making. They it's not riddled in nostalgia. It's a continuation to the 90s cartoon. There is a little edge to it because it is more adult. But it's not blood, blood, blood. Swear, swear, swear. It's sprinkled in. And it's... Yeah. And there's good the stories. The X-Men 97 series really did a good job of, like... Uh, or not the X Men, the original X Men, the animated series, did a really good job of like adapting classic like Chris Clare monarchs and stuff. So I was kind of curious to see where the new show goes, but I think I'll probably rewatch the original animated series and then at watch some 97. point and then do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I've seen with this this one that's really cool is like what they do super cool is you know how in comics how you go from issue to issue of a storyline going on, right? They yeah. were able, and the, even these episodes are only like 30 minutes long, except for, <clears> I think <throat> the first one was like an hour, right? But the other ones I think are like 30 to 40, and they go a little more. Right. They, they did a good job of like, oh, this episode is the storyline of, um, of what's her name? The, the version of Jean Grey, the clone. Oh, I can't think her, her name. Phoenix? Not Phoenix, the other one, the, the Madam uh, the Goblin Queen. But she has another name, too, I'm trying to think of. I can't, I don't think her name. It's like Madam something, uh... But yeah, so she's called the Goblin Queen. It's like Jean Grey with a cape. She has a whole like horror movie episode where she's working with Mr. Sinister and stuff. Right. And then it's one storyline, one episode. Wraps up that story. Move into the next episode. Oh, now we're dealing with Mr. Sinister? Okay, cool. Okay, now here's um, Bastion. He's a villain for most of the season. But we got other little mini things going on. Like, oh, we're dealing with this. Oh, someone, uh, we got more if we can change another character. Sometimes he cameos as Hulk. Sometimes he cameos as other... Characters. There's an episode where when Rogue, so in the storyline, certain X-Men end up dying and they stay, stay dead temporarily. Um, 
Right. So Rogue ends up dealing with the fact that Gambit is no longer with, with her. And so she goes on this revenge quest. Her revenge quest, because this is in the 90s universe, leads up to the 90s Captain America showing up. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so there's little cool things like that. And like there's cool stuff Rogue gets to. And actually, I don't even have told you this. I met um, the uh, the actor who played the original uh, Jubilee at an event for the fin- finale for X-97. I went to an event. Oh, that's kind of fun. I had a picture with her and stuff. And it was pretty sick. Yeah. So it's all right. So yeah, uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm hoping it all works out. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not I mean, I just hope that like with you, like, I, I, I see your I see your issues with. With, with Deadpool, I hope that you just genuinely go in with an open mind and hopefully at least have oh, fun. Well, like yeah. that's what I'm hoping. I'll for. hope. I'll hope. Uh, hopefully. Um, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, I do. I mean, I, I just wanna, want a good I story. Want a good I want. Movie. I want to have fun. I, I'm looking forward to, um, in terms of like characters that are popping up that I want to see. I'm looking forward to the fact that Wesley Snipes' Blade is in a whether it's Disney, even though it's Disney, and even though it's like could be limited rated R whatever they decide to, to do with it I just want to see it's been a while mm. since we've seen him I want to see if Wesley Snipes because a lot of people forget this you know a lot of these actors in these movies that like they do choreography and they're like then they will practice to be a badass right Wesley Snipes before playing Blade is a champion in like Shotokan Karate oh yeah I want to see Wesley Snipes in this movie whoever the villains are like whether it's mutant people or whoever he's fighting if you have him in this movie I don't care who he's teaming up with. I just want to see him just kicking ass. Like, I want to see Wesley Snipes throwing crazy kicks and doing what Wesley Snipes does. Oh, yeah. Because that isn't him doing choreography. That's all him. That's, that's, he's a legend. Like, so, like, whatever the choreography system is, I want to see the legend just, yeah. like, I, like, they got to do choreography to make Jennifer Gardner look good. They do choreography to make any of those other people look good. But Wesley Snipes, that's all him. I want to see Snipes oh, yeah. just kicking fools and maybe there'll be a Morbius joke in there. Like, you know, oh, I got a vampire to hunt in the sunny. Sony Universe. Mm, I think that'd be fun. funny. It'd be funny if they went there, went there like, yeah, this Morbius movie is pretty bad. And then maybe oh, yeah. Deadpool's having a conversation with like, oh, you got a vampire you need me to take care of? <laughs> like, 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 that'd yeah. be pretty funny. Them to reference well, Morbius. I think we should, uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? We're already about an hour. Yeah, I think here. we can cut it from here. I did have one last thing about, I guess we could go over the last thing about San Diego Comic Con being around the same time as Deadpool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we can talk about that. Are there any uh, predictions or whatever yeah. you? Yeah. So we, to? we we heard we're finally gonna get a new director for Blade. Hopefully announced the San Diego Comic Con. Oh, yeah. They've been waiting, so that'll be interesting to see who the new Hopefully director they, is. Yeah. I guess. Do you have a director you're hoping to see bring brought into this travesty? Like this someone? That you I, think I mean, they at this point, I, I don't know if anybody wants to touch this thing. I know Mahershala Ali has been saying for like two years he doesn't want to do the thing anymore most of the cast that weren't in the ironclad contract are out i think this movie would be ba- better Your if they del toro bring him back from blade 2 i say like even though i don't know if i necessarily want him attached to this garbage if there's anyone i think that could save this it can make this because i heard one of the problems with this movie was the action scenes if if you're gonna make this movie good you're gonna make a new new blade movie good and maybe the problem and i hate to say this i know it's a new actor i know this stuff maybe they shouldn't have made a new blade movie because maybe the problem with this situation is that, and I've argued this since the beginning, you can you can do a lot of choreography training to make an actor look good, but maybe if you went with this movie, you should have went and got someone like, if you're going to get a younger dude, get a younger martial artist to actually make the movie pop. If that yeah. was your problem, maybe the problem is that Mahershal Ali, we've, I don't think we've seen a single movie where he's been in a fight scene. Like, I think, let's see, there's... He was kind of fighting people in in Luke Cage's Cottonmouth, but he didn't really fight. He was more right. of a political threat. Like so, so to me, my biggest problem is how do you convince people that Mahershala Ali, great actor, but how do you show him being cool like Blade? Because those insane, yeah. those insane Blade movies were insanely epic. Like you have a dude wearing sunglasses with throwing stars and swords and guns, kicking the crap out of vampires. Yeah, I mean, like, hopefully they can figure something like that out. But, I think Blade at least could be a grounded movie depending on They could on make it cool. Do, they definitely I have potential to make it cool. Like, maybe not grounded. I want it to be wild in the same way the Wesley Snipes movies were. I think I what I want is Marvel want said Blade they wanted to venture into the multiverse. Well, well, they, well, the, well the whole that. idea is they wanted to um, really work on the idea of um, of having all these Marvel characters kind of like diff- Marvel wanted to have different pillars of different universes like different tones, right? So like you have 
your street level characters like Spider-Man and Daredevil. Then you have your cosmic characters like the Guardians. Then you got like your Avengers, which are kind of like in the middle of everything, kind of the world ending threat stuff. Right. Then you got with Doctor Strange and like some of the nuts, some stuff like uh, Werewolf by Night, they wanted to dive into more of the supernatural. And yeah, they definitely would... jumped the gun on Werewolf by Night. I like yeah. that special, but you could tell they were trying to establish this universe, and then Blade <laughs> kept getting pushed back. I mean, in fairness, when that move, when that special came out, Blade should have been well into cooking because. Uh, they uh, fucking put Mahershala Ali in a voice cameo at the end of Eternals. <laughs> oh my god, Eternals is a fucking embarrassment. That is that is one of the biggest embarrassing flubs in superhero they, history. I wonder why they ended up um, ended up doing that. Like, why why attach him to a travesty like? For her publicity, like, but then it's like, oops, you know. Now we've uh, established this Blade guy in a movie that no one watched. Yep. I don't even think, like, Eternals was the worst Marvel movie of all time. It was just one of the stupidest, most cocky gambles ever. Where you have, like, these ten uninteresting characters that they're not even going to bother to establish fighting nameless monsters. It looks like something straight out of the mind of Zack Snyder or something. Uh, it was, yeah, it was pretty lame. But, anyways... Yeah, so I think that... Uh, when you is think there that, any, like, movie announcements or anything? Yeah, think? so I think or that... Do you I've think it's gonna be more of a show... Do you think we're gonna get new announcements? Or do you think it's gonna be more like... Here's where we're at with the 5,000 things we've already announced. I think it will be... I think it's actually... I think they're actually gonna announce some new stuff. Because I think that when you go... Marvel hasn't been to San Diego Comic Con in a while. And they need to do something to... Because as much as there are definitely people excited about Deadpool and Wolverine... There are definitely... Except, like, you know, I, I still think they need, they gotta announce the new Kang stuff soon, especially with those, with, with those movies on the rise, but, and, and I'm sure they're gonna get delayed, pushed back a little bit, but they still should establish, one of my biggest problems with Marvel right now is, we don't have villains. Right. And so there's three things they can announce that I think could actually raise excitement and get people a general direction of where the MCU is going. They need a new powerhouse movie, which is a new... They can't just have, look, I'm excited we're getting a new Captain America movie, I'm excited we're getting a new Deadpool Wolverine movie, but Marvel isn't excelling unless they're making an event film. What if they so, just brought in the Power Pack? They cancel everything, and they restart the universe starring the Power Pack and the Dazzler. That'd be crazy. The Dazzler and the Power Pack are the only two characters we get. Maybe we could get like something like X... X caliber. I, I I just don't know if they'll that will bring in what they what, what people want or like what's gonna help. They they, mm. they need something big that's gonna make a splash. So I think I, I think personally if you're gonna announce something even if the movie's a few years away, what, whatever the process of it is, I think you either announce because it because we know Fantastic Four is coming out fairly decently soon. Um, they're gonna start filming it soon. They said while they were filming it, they're gonna start to announce even though he's gonna probably only cameo in it and probably even be the end cream end credit scene stinger. I think they gotta reveal Doom soon. They gotta give yeah. us who's playing Doom. We should know. I think going into Fantastic Four, we should know who's playing Doom. Like I don't think they should even be waiting. I think they should have made that announcement already. But they announced Josh Bowen playing Thanos at Comic Con. So before Guardians came out, so you might right. as well you might as well just announce. I think whoever the actor is, if it's a big actor and someone that can bring a good Doom, because if Marvel makes a good Doom, I think there's actually some things to look forward to in Marvel. If they have a good Doom. And there's a Doom that people really want to see, and there, there's good writing for him, and he actually isn't like the previous actors that played Doom. I think you have a great... I think that Marvel might finally have the Darth Vader they craved. Because the Russos kept saying that they were that, 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 that they thought Thanos was Darth Vader. They should just do Rami Malek. You think he'd be great to, as Doom? I like Rami Malek. I like him as an actor. I think, be, I think he was pretty good in uh, that James Bond movie he was in. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see him. I think it'd be great. I think... But the other thing is, so you have... Gotta announce Kang... Got to announce Doom, or the third option, event film. Something that you, you don't have to wait for Kang coming out. Um, something that's more focused on like a storyline with certain characters. It's more of a conflict focus, not necessarily a uh, some more like team up idea or versus Mortal Kombat style than like say because we're gonna wait for Kang for a little bit I think, and I think we'll wait for Doom for a little bit even though we get Fantastic Four. So to me, yeah. the best thing you're gonna do is. They've talked about it being rumored. Just announced something like an X Men and Avengers collab project, and then maybe establish like who's the, what's the roster for the X Men, what's the roster for the Avengers, make it interesting, make it exciting, and kind of just kind of build on that. I think that would be something that people right now, the X Men are outselling Avengers. So 
You yeah. bring up you you bring out a project that's gonna highlight the X Men over Avengers. You know what they people should people would like that. You know what I think they should do that uh, that probably uh, would be a practical lead in to Avengers the duology they planned. Squeeze an Avengers movie in between, just called the New Avengers, and establish the new main Avengers team. Uh, and pick the roster for it. Maybe announce the roster. Well, I think what they could do is like, I think an Avengers movie before, um, before Avengers 5 and Secret Wars because they're waiting for a long time. I think the Avengers and X-Men thing is a good idea because you're going to get like all three of these. I imagine Secret Wars, one of the best things that Secret Wars in the comics and hopefully Marvel takes note and does Secret Wars like they should from the best comic versions of Secret Wars, which is right. that they should take multiple teams of heroes and put them together. Yeah. You have the conflicts and the internet, so you have your fantasy. I mean, but four. that's that's kind of what they're going to do with Secret Wars. Like, why would they... Why so what I'm saying is just make a movie where they establish kind of... Maybe that these heroes... Something I think that's really good with storylines is establishing... Maybe not all these characters are cool with each other. So mm. so I think establishing that maybe, say, X-Men that come from this other universe that aren't in the main MCU timeline, they don't know who these guys are. One, one of my biggest problems with, uh, with Spider-Man No Way Home was... I didn't understand how when Toby... Andrew and Tom were in the same universe. How when they come for him after Aunt May dies, they just all they don't even know this Peter, and they come up to him like, "Hey, we're sorry your aunt died." Like, if I don't know someone that's gonna walk up to me on on a day when my aunt just died, I'm fighting people dressed as Spider-Man to to solve the problem. I don't know who yeah. these guys are. Like, they needed to fight first. I, I I said that for a long time. I talked to Hunter about it. I talked to all my other friends about it. There needed to be a fight between the three Spider-Man when they entered that universe. Because they're strangers. They don't come from the same universe. They, they're not known. I, I don't know if that's a particularly Spider-Man thing to do, though. No, that's If it fair. was, like, Wolverine or Punisher or something, and, like, some weird guy comes shit dressed up as Wolverine or Punisher. And so that's like, the thing, right? So they're gonna scrap, but even with everything going on, Spider-Man's gonna be like, what the fuck? And then he'll be like, Wait, oh, so I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, that so makes sense. Yeah, so then I guess with the side of the, of the yes, Wolverine Yeah, so I get thing, what you're saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying with the Wolverine thing. I, I feel like if the Avengers have never met the X-Men, if we have an established X-Men team that comes in, and they're the X-Men. Like, you know, with Civil War, they had heroes, but we didn't really have a big, big teams. They were kind of jumbled up pieces of the Avengers we had that were split together. So I would like kind of like a Civil War film, like a middle film. Like, it's not a total Avengers movie, but it's kind of like a Avengers level movie where it kind yeah. of builds on, you have two teams of heroes and they have different perspectives. And maybe there's a conflict. Maybe they do something like in the original Civil War storyline where there is kind of, we know in the original stuff, with Civil War, they did the Accords because of the whole Superhero yeah. Registration Act. But what if they did something more like the whole Superhero Registration Act in the comics, or it's an outlaw on mutants and stuff? And one of our Avengers are kind of acting as... Maybe we see the Avengers more as heroes than villains. So, like, mm. these, these versions of Avengers, Tony's leading them, and Steve's there, and they're all there. But these versions of these characters are here as kind of working for the government as a justice system. Oh, yeah. As, like all mutants are outlawed. So the entire team of Avengers don't have any mutants, and then the mutants come in, and they're upset. Because these people, are, maybe maybe they knew the Avengers at one time, and they turned on on them. Oh. And, and so the, the storyline is these guys, that they're ready to duke it out. I mean, you gotta admit, it'd be pretty cool to watch Iron Man fight Wolverine. Like, I mean, it'd be cool. I don't know how it would uh, be set, like not a little bit convoluted, but you know what? If they set it up, I think it'd be cool. I think Maybe they could figure it out. I think I, that's kind of what... Uh, maybe like Secret Wars would do that too, though. I think honestly, it would make more sense is like Avengers versus Thunderbolts. Or something. That'd be cool if they did that. I'd be up for that. If like, they plus, that'd be kind of a smaller scale thing to. Uh, I mean, it'd still be a I big movie, but I mean, I don't movie, know if this Thunderbolts a Thunderbolts roster is even gonna be able to stand up to any of the Avengers we have. I mean, it depends what they end up putting together for the roster. Like Tom Holland's probably not gonna be a major Avengers character. I don't think Spider-Man should be a major Avengers character until like a Secret Wars. Like on a normal Avengers roster, which we haven't really seen a normal Avengers roster. Like yeah. Avengers Endgame was kind of a Avengers roster. Um, and and uh, Avengers uh, Infinity War was, but um, it, it's been a while since they really like sat down and said this is the roster like it's just a bunch of people fighting a threat together uh not necessarily like a, a strongly put cohesive 
uh, Avengers, which is one thing I'm excited for Thunderbolts about, is that at least it's, like, a fucking cohesive roster. Like, we know who's on the team and who's okay, not. Okay, we got a, uh, apparently yeah. we got a, we, we got kind of a prediction, background information of things that could be, could be announced at San Diego Comic-Con now. So we got the predictions. It says, Avengers 5, new title might be announced. Mm. Um, yeah, you probably should do that. Fantastic Four synopsis might come out, apparently, what I the mean, movie's yeah. about. Um, I guess the only thing you can really announce at this point is the villain. I think it's kind of clear what they're doing. They're doing then the it nice says, and we know they're having an X-Men movie that's been r- written that was announced a while ago oh, by the shit. people. And then they're saying that Thor 5 logo Avengers, they'll announce what characters will be in the first lineup. Uh, mm. Midnight Suns logo, Thunderbolts new synopsis, Doctor Strange 3 announced with logo, Black Panther 3, Ryan Coker's return, Young Avengers logo, Brave New World new synopsis, Scarlet Witch directors, apparently they're doing a Scarlet Witch movie. I don't know why they're doing a Scarlet Witch movie, but... Eh, who knows? Yeah, I don't know how much I believe all that. That'd be a lot of new fits. Unless they're like, we're just canceling everything we announced. These are just, slate. like, things that will... This be... would probably be a more, uh, better slate than what yeah. they have. Yeah, this is just structured, shit. like, options. These are not, like... Oh, these are, like, things that could... Yeah, there's n- this isn't going by any information. This is just what them they're predicting maybe could be announced based on what we know. Okay. So, yeah, I think um, that's pretty interesting. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see uh, what they do. I'm hoping they, they have some good stuff and whatever. But, uh, yeah, I guess that was the uh, Power Hour Volume 13. Um, we'll catch you guys next time. Uh, what's our next topic? I, mean, I don't think we thought about that yet. I think we were going to do... I think we decided next time we are going to do... I think we're going to do Bruce Lee next. Oh, yeah. We'll do Bruce yeah. Lee next. We'll talk Bruce Lee. I'll watch through the movies. Yeah, we're, we're going to watch through the I'll movies. I'll watch through my Criterion box set. We'll get it yeah. going. Yeah, we'll watch, we'll watch through the movies, and then we'll get back here. Guys. So just stay tuned. I might even have Connor come over to my place and have him watch some Warrior. Because there's some good yeah. stuff with some Bruce Lee connections with Warrior I think would be fun to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. That'd be sick. Well, all of that will be next week when we talk about Bruce Lee stuff. We'll uh, see you guys next time. Oh, also, subscribe to Joe at uh, Jedi Joey. Yes, sir. On YouTube. Lots of stuff coming I'll, today. I'll link it below. Yeah, appreciate it.